Okay, I'm back again. Here's the 2409 file stock movement. Thanks to Jose for pointing out that I thought it was a 2209. But, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know the technical stuff too much. I do know uh, we're going to start on this end of the movement in a movement holder. And this gear I'm going to call a minute wheel because the minute hand attaches to it. And there's a little thin washer on here. When I was a machinist, those were called Belleville washers. I don't know what they're called, but this is the minute wheel. We're going to take that out and put that over here. Uh, here's your balance jewel. We're going to take that apart later. This is your keyless works. Here's how that works. Just a clutch that disengages. Engages and disengages for winding and setting the time. So, uh, we're going to take that apart. Hopefully you can see how I'm doing. It's the total time to take apart one of these varies the way you do it. I'm sure I do it a little unorthodox and some people may take umbrage with the way I do it, but too bad. This is my, this is mine and I'll do it my way. But hopefully you can see on the video here, these screws are pretty tiny and we're going to take a little magnetism on that one. We're going to take them out one by one. Uh, when I take a movement apart out of the case, I don't put gloves on because I'm touching the movement minimally. But when I'm getting this deep into it and assembling, I'm going to put on some nitro gloves. That'll keep the contamination down. And the oils are uh, contaminants on your skin, your hands. Plus, my hands are pretty hideous looking. My, my fingers, they're all cracked and dried and nasty. So, who wants to see that? I don't have pretty hands, I'll be honest. Okay, there's those three. Um, those little tiny screws, great to pick up with the Dumont tweezers. And to... This is just kind of popped in there. We're going to give that a little tweak with my cheaper tweezers. And that comes out. And there you go. The keyless works. Right here, we have that spring. And if you don't keep an eye on it and cover it, it's going to take off. And you're going to be lost without it. I just put my finger over it and release it. And... Uh, Pick that up and take it away. This is another wheel. I don't know what it's called, but you get the picture. And then we have one over here. I don't know what it's called, but I know where it goes. Keyless works. I know what that's called. I don't know why. I just do. Okay, next. Take this lever out. Looks like a lever. I'm calling it a lever. This thing... It's called either. But we're taking that out. Here we go. Okay. Now, with all that out, the stem will slide right out because there's nothing holding it in. And we have these two, I'm going to call that the winding wheel, winding gear. Sure, why not? Let's call it that. And that engages and disengages with the winding gear. Let's call, no. Time setting gear. There you go. Like I said, I'll just do what I can here. Now, here's the cannon pinion. That I do know is a cannon pinion. Um, you could call it a the hour wheel because the hour hand attaches to it. Uh, we're going to flip this over and start disassembling the other side. Okay. Now, anytime you work on a movement that is already wound down you're going to get some movement from that balance uh, moving around perfectly normal just the slightest movement that's actually a good sign that says hey this thing is uh, pretty good shape nothing's binding up now first thing I do and like I said this is the way I do it you do what you want I'm gonna take that balance jewel out and I made a tool see if we can get a, an eyeball on that I made a tool out of a dowel chucked it up into 
a cordless drill and filed it down to a point and then took a drill bit by hand, centered it, and put a little hollow cavity in there. Uh, it's worked pretty good so far. However, it's not perfect. It might take a little tinkering to get it to work for you, for me, for whoever. If you notice here, see if I can show that, there's a little relief right around there and we're going to turn that shock spring, I'm calling it a shock spring, and it'll pop right out of there just by giving that a twist. Hopefully it shows up on the video and I don't have to do this 16 takes. We can do it on one. Like I said, uh, you know, I ain't a pro. There we go. Let's give that a go. Alright. Can you see that? I can see it. Of course I can see it. I'm not looking at the computer. We give that a turn, and there it is. It's loose. And it's a feisty little bugger. You pick that up the wrong way, it's going to go flying. And it's not magnetic because it's brass. So good luck finding it if it's not on your bench. Okay, so I, I like to take my time. Pick that bugger up. Okay, there you go. Now somebody... Okay, we got the, the shocker off. Here's your balance, your jewel. It's two-piece. There's... Ah, come on. There's... Let's focus that a little better. There's one part of it, and... I guess that's the base jewel, and then there's a cap jewel. Sometimes the lubricant will keep those together and they won't just pop apart easily and I won't even attempt right now because I like to take them apart in the solution to break down some of that lubricant so I put that in the parts bin we're gonna get that balance out next and from here everything's straightforward easy that's, that screw comes out and if you're having trouble picking something up nothing like a little piece of rodico 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 putty I don't know watchmakers putty call it what you want and there's also for better lack of the term a shim under that to shim it up so it has the proper clearance. We're going to get in there and give that a tweak because that is pinned in there. There's two pins that line that up. There it is. There's that little shim. Alrighty. There you go. You got to look at that. Let's get on right there. And we're just going to come in here and pick this. Pick this bugger right up and put it down and then turn it over so we have a little resting spot for it we'll worry about cleaning that later um, let me get a better shot of that there it is there's the balance assembly with that top jewel removed we'll take that bottom jewel out later and then we're going to locate that over to our bin okay now that's a fairly delicate piece. Having that out of the way and successfully out of the way is a good thing. Uh, the next part I'm going to call the pallet fork bridge. Sure, let's call it that. We got a screw here. Sometimes these are little buggers to get out. They're very tight sometimes. Very shallow, flat head. There's that. And these are also pinned. There's two pins to line that. I did wind this down, but it looks like it may have some some tension left in it. That's something else I should have shown on the video. How to wind down a, a mainspring. Okay, maybe some maybe some other time. Like I said, I don't have a script. I'm not working with a script here. 
There we go. Yeah, so that's going to wind down a bit. See, not much at all. We're going to call that the bridge. Okay. What do we want to do next? All right, let's take out the secondhand pinion. Is it really a secondhand pinion? I don't know. I'm calling it that. And it's held in place by this brass colored spring. A little more energy left in that main spring. This little screw is a bugger too sometimes. That can be a can fight you sometimes getting it out. Let's put that over there. And this is like a preload spring. Puts a little preload on that so you don't have a second hand bouncing around. Keeps up keeps that backlash in check. Okay, right in the middle here is a pinion. Uh, did that come up? And yeah, let's move it in. There it is. Second hand pinion, let's call it that. That's a gear driven. This is an indirectly driven uh, second hand movement. Okay, let's take that bridge apart. I'm calling this the train bridge. Sure, let's call it that. Two screws, those are also pinned so it's lined up properly. I know there's gears called the first gear, second gear, third gear. I keep forgetting whether it's the first gear coming off the mainspring or the first gear coming off the balance. And the escapement wheel. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Only goes in one spot. And sometimes you got to get in here with a screwdriver, give it a nudge, and she'll loosen up. And then you can, yeah, there's a pin on the other end. Okay. Now you can see the gap that it's creating. Okay. Come on, you bugger. It's a pretty precision fit. So it's going to take a little. A little working. Okay, here we go. Off with the bridge. And setting these can be a little bit of a pain too, once you have your train together. But with a little practice, you can pop it right on there. Okay, there it is. There's your one of your dowel pins that hold that in place. Let's put that over here. Okay, now we got some gears. First gear, second gear, third gear, escapement wheel. I don't know. I know what the escapement wheel is. What's this one called? I don't know. I just know where it goes. There's another one here. Hopefully this is coming up on the video. There's your escapement wheel. That works in conjunction with your pallet fork. There we go. Now, there's the main spring and the winder and the click. Let's tackle that next. Because you're winding, our click is going to engage turning this screw. We don't have to hold it. It's only when we tighten it that we have to hold it from turning. So let's get that out of the way. Again. Of course, I didn't have to screw it all the way. So somebody said, somebody might think, why would you call yourself a rat-faced git? Okay, good question. Monty Python is the answer. One of my favorite sketches. The Gits. The family's last name was Git. And his, the husband's name was A. Sniveling Little Rat-Faced Git. And I think the mother or the wife was Jerry Old Bag. I don't know. But... It's just funny. Cracks me up. Okay, that's off. We're going to leave the click in there for now. And here is a wheel. I don't know what that's called. A winding wheel. Yeah, let's call it that. That's going to come off. Those are reverse threads. Notice I'm turning it clockwise to take it off. Now usually a screw would indicate reverse threads with a slash or a line milled across parallel with the slot to let you know hey 
that is reverse thread so instead of righty tidy lefty lefty loosey it's actually righty loosey lefty tidy we'll worry about that later okay this is a two piece two piece bugger okay it's being a mule which is good because that means it's a precision fit precision is the key to a good movement I think all right let's try this okay maybe not let's come around this way <clears throat> maybe I need more vodka yeah yeah work my way come on genius how many of these have you done there you go that worked if it doesn't work and you shouldn't use force get a bigger hammer okay there's another one okay I'm gonna call this bridge the mainspring bridge sure sounds good we got three screws on this one one on each end and one in the middle we can loosen them let's get my thumb out of the way dummy there you go okay let's take those in. sometimes these are sunk in a little bit you can't get them out but these Dumonts can pick up the tiniest screw with just a little bit of purchase on it purchase can't believe I said that back to my engineering and welding days got a good purchase on that oh yeah sure alright this one might be a there you go. Like that. All right. This one we're going to give a little tug. There's a little slot right there. We can get a blade under it. This also has two dowels, dowel pins. There we go. There's the back side of that main spring bridge sure okay before we go any further we got a pin that's gonna fall out if we flip this over and we don't do something about it this little guy here that's that little one we depressed to help get the stem out when we remove the case or the movement from the case okay let's get that main spring barrel that's this little guy the biggest component where all the energy is stored Let's see if we can turn that over for you. There you go. There's the main spring. There's a spring inside that all wound up. Okay. Now this time, we are going to... I don't know what that gear is called, so don't ask me. But it is connected to the cannon pinion. And the cannon pinion usually comes off with your hand removers the hand remover oh, let's focus that a little better hand remover has a little notch milled into it so you can grab that cannon pinion and it'll pop it right off otherwise you can use a pin vise and just pop it off with your hands let's see if we can get a good good angle of the dangle here show you what we're doing because there is a little bit of a, a shoulder there and then give it a pull did that come up yeah of course it did but it's out of focus but you get the idea once you see it live on your end you'll know what I'm talking about if you decide to do this hopefully this helps if not um, at least entertaining you Okay, now the cannon pinion is what keeps that in place, and then we pull that out. Uh, what's that called? I don't know. 
doesn't matter. I just know where it goes. Okay. This side is totally stripped of the movement. You can see the jewels. We got the, the balance jewel to go yet. There's the main train jewels, the escapement jewel. We're going to turn that over. And the other side of that balance jewel held in by that spring. Same as the top side. It's got that little relief. We're going to do the same thing with our machined dowel. Mm -hmm. I believe I made this with a file and eyeballed the center of it with a very tiny drill bit to get that shape without a lathe. Just did it on a drill. Um, somebody might be successful doing that. I don't know. Being a machinist, you kind of learn these things. Have a good eye for accuracy. There's that little bugger. I'll put that aside. And here's the balance tool. I'll put that over there. Okay. And there's the movement. Stripped. Stripped enough. I'm not going to take any more uh, apart out of this because there's no need to. We're just going to clean everything real good. Um, let's get a look at this. Here's what I have in my parts tray. I got extra parts trays, but I use uh, petri dishes from the laboratory because they can hold bigger parts and they got a nice little lid. Let's go this way. Okay, here's parts there. I throw everything in a part in a. Yeah, I don't have a system for putting stuff in there because I don't need a system. I know where they go. I don't have to look at it and say, hmm, where does that spring go? Where does that screw go? Where does that gear go? It doesn't matter. Everything goes in the same same holder. There's somewhat of a uh, organization here. Somewhat. Not much. Believe me. Uh, I don't separate that balance from the balance assembly. The cock. I leave that all there because I've ruined too many mainsprings, but I can clean that and uh, do a pretty good job with that in that state. Uh, the mainspring, I have a an unorthodox way of removing and installing a mainspring. Some people may uh, object to it. Well, too bad. I just won't show you what I do. We'll just know that it's going to come apart, get cleaned, put a little lubrication in there, and everything will be good to go. Now, the total time to uh, strip this to this point is probably five minutes. You can strip one of these quickly, uh, even if it had the day complication, the 2414, I think. Right, Jose? Those are uh, just a you know, little bit more involved. I'll do one of them too. But three to five minutes, you could have everything stripped down to this point with a little bit of experience. I'm getting long-winded here because of the video and I want you guys to see how everything's going. Okay, so for now, we're going to stop this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.